Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query session with Learn at No Star. In today's session, we are going to continue with what we were discussing in our last session, which was basically to calculate the year to date and month to date totals on the sales table. But we also discuss a little bit about window framing and how we can use it to uh, deal with the duplicate records in our data. In today's video, we are going to focus on an example in which we are going to calculate the first order number for the year and the last order number for the year. So for this example, we are going to use the SQL analytic functions and we are also going to make use of the window framing because that is the way to ensure that the results that we're getting are correct. So let's get started. So this is what we had in our last session. We discussed how to calculate the year to date and the month to date totals. So I'm going to just modify the same calculation that we had. So the first thing that we are going to calculate over here is the first order of that year. So we are going to calculate the order number of that first order. So let's say this is the first order. So this happened on the 4th of January of 2008. So my first order should come out as uh, SCO71858. And then I have to calculate the last order of this year, which should be coming as the last order that happened on the 2nd of December. And this should be the order number that I should be getting in the output. So how we can do this, let's see, using the analytic functions. So now we are going to make use of some other analytic functions. Uh, there is a function called the first value and there is another function called the last value. So straightforward functions. We're just going to make use of those functions. So I'm going to calculate the first value and I'm going to calculate the value for the sales order number. So I'm just going to put that inside. And then I have to use the over clause. I'm going to partition by the year and I'm going to order by the order date because that is what I need. And I'm just going to calculate here as first or first order. All right. I it will have to close the brackets here. And I'm not going to use any framing over here, but for the next calculation that I'm going to perform, I'm going to use framing so that we can see what is difference in the output. So now I'm going to use this function again and my whole calculation is going to be the same. The only thing that I'm going to change over here is add the window framing. The window framing again is going to be, it's, it's going to be between the first row in that data set defined by this partition that we have over here and the current record in that data set defined by this partition which is on the year of order date. So let's just run this query and get the output. So we can see over here that the first order has been correctly calculated. So the first order um, even when we did not apply the window framing has been correctly calculated as uh, S1858, which is the order number for the order that was placed on 4th of January, which is actually the first order of that year. And the first order that has been calculated um, by the same calculation, but adding the window framing also has given us the same output. And as soon as the year changes over here, which is 2009, we have got the same output. So this seems to be working perfectly fine, even if we do not use a window framing, which is a good thing for us. But now our next requirement is to calculate the last order for that year as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just copy these calculations, one without the window framing, one with the window framing. And I'm just going to replace the first value over here with another function which is going to be the last value. So this is going to be giving me the last value in this partition which is defined by the year of the order date. Okay. And let's just change the name to last order and last order. Okay. And let's just add a prefix over here to identify that we have a frame defined over here. Now, another change that I need to make is I have to change this condition that I have placed in my frame. So I have defined my frame differently because now I'm going to calculate the last order. When I'm saying that I want to calculate the last order, what I'm working on is the records which are 
following the current records, not the ones which are preceding the current records. Now, let's just take a greater look at what I have just said. So let's take an example of this one particular record. Let's say this is one of my orders. This was placed on the 15th of May. Now, at this point of time, I want to calculate what was the last order placed in the same year. So the same year is going to be 2008 and I'm going to calculate the last order. Now, to calculate the last order, I need to go and check the following records, right? The records that follow this particular current row record, not the records that precede this particular current row record. So now I have to change this condition and I have to check the records. I have to define the frame from this current row till the end of this partition, which is defined by the year of order date, which means which is going to be the last row in this partition. So this is going to be the unbounded following row, which is, means basically last row in the partition. So I'm going to now make this as rows between current row and unbounded following. And now let's run this query and see what is the output that we get. So now when I run this query, you will see that the differences in the output that we have got. So the last order with frame has the same value for all the records, which is 816. The last order for uh, the calculation that we perform without adding the frame, that has a distinct value for each row. Okay, so let's first find out what should have been the last value. So the last order is going to be the one that is placed on the order date of 2nd of December for this year. So this is the last record by order date. And the order number for this is 816. So this is correctly calculated where we added the framing. So because this should have been the last order number. And this is the last order number for all the records. Even for a record which is from the 10th of April, the last record, the last order number for that year has been correctly calculated as 816. But when we did not add the frame, for example, in this calculation, we calculated the last order, but we did not define the frame explicitly. We can see that it has actually given the same order number as for this current row that we have over here. And when we had duplicate records, for example, in this case, it has just picked up one record randomly and then it has picked, it has output that record number as the last order. So this is where it is very important to define your framing and why it is important to explicitly go and define your framing and not just leave it to SQL Server to define the framing on its own or use a default framing method because it can result in incorrect results, which we can see by this example, which we had for the last order. And we can also see that when we did not define uh, the framing explicitly and tried to calculate the first order, SQL Server did give us the correct results. So it was able to calculate the correct results for the rows uh, defined on the basis of the preceding rows, but it was not able to calculate the correct results when we tried to define the records which were following the current row records. So that is the importance of defining the window framing. And it is very important to define it. Another advantage and why it is important to define Windows framing is that uh, it is a more optimized SQL query execution. When you actually define it, you make sure that your results are correct. You also make sure if you watch the previous uh, video, you will see that it can handle your duplicates in a better way when you define your window framing. And another advantage is SQL optimization happens when you use this particular window framing. So it helps SQL to execute in an optimized way. So that is the advantage. You should always go and try to define explicitly your window framing. It's always a good practice instead of leaving it to SQL Server to define it by default, which might result in correct results might not result in correct results but it's always an optimized way of defining your SQL query your optimized execution will happen if you define your windows framing correctly
So I hope again that you found this video useful. We'll be covering many more analytical functions and we'll be seeing more examples on these and how they can be used. Now for each of these analytical functions that we have done, there are parallel ways to do uh, these computations by using different other SQL Server functions as well. But these are easier ways to perform your calculations. So I really hope that you fi you're finding these videos helpful. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll be posting more videos videos regularly on SQL. If you have any particular SQL query that you want to be answered, please feel free to mail it to us or you can put it down in the comments below and we'll pick it up in one of our videos and try to answer all your queries. Thanks again and have a good day. Goodbye.